That's the water outside the Coliseum. Hurricane Katrina was one of the most powerful and deadly hurricanes in U.S. history. The storm surge along the Mississippi Gulf Coast was 25 to 30 feet as this very large hurricane's 145 mile per hour winds pushed massive amounts of water inland. What you are about to watch is video of Katrina as she first made landfall along the southeast Florida coast as a Category 1 hurricane to bushwhacking the surprise Florida Keys the next morning. From the hurricane hunter planes tasked with tracking these tropical terrors and finally making landfall along the Louisiana-Mississippi border. Veteran storm chasers Jim Eds and Scott McPartland take you on a video journey into the life cycle of Hurricane Katrina when the storm surge swallowed up the coastline and the sky was filled with debris. At 5 p.m. on August 23rd, the National Hurricane Center started issuing advisories on Tropical Depression 12 located in the southeast Bahamas. In less than 24 hours, the depression was upgraded to Tropical Storm Katrina and was forecast to track across Florida, then into the eastern Gulf in 72 hours. On August 25th, Katrina continued to strengthen. A lot of people went to the beach to check out the storm in the afternoon. No one knew at the time that Katrina was destined to become a Category 5 monster. I drove south towards Fort Lauderdale when I came across this gas station overhang flapping in the wind. Looks like the money shot to me, I thought. The forecast was for Katrina to move west over Florida and exit out around Fort Myers if you go by the skinny black line like I was. Unfortunately, as this Doppler radar loop shows, that didn't happen. Notice the southwest drift towards the Florida Keys where I live. All the Keys residents expected was just a little bad weather, but instead they awoke to a rapidly intensifying hurricane to the northwest.
here's my favorite clip of a Storm Surge Road Warrior. As Katrina continued to track southwest, I caught a ride on the NOAA G4 jet. My name is Paul Flaherty, I'm the flight director on the G4 for today's mission. And we are flying a surveillance mission around Hurricane Katrina. And what we're doing right now is we're just coming from the area northeast of Florida. We're sampling the atmosphere around Katrina, including the Bermuda High or the Atlantic High to find out what, what that may be doing to influence the steering currents and the movement of the storm. We are now uh, right now over the Bahamas and we'll eventually move west just north of Cuba and into the Gulf of Mexico and hopefully this information that we send back to the hurricane center and to the hurricane forecasters will help them better forecast what the storm may do over the next couple of days. The storm has moved a little further south than was forecasted and uh, hopefully we, today we can find out why that happened and uh, use the information to find out what will happen over the next few days. What we're doing is we're dropping weather instruments called SONs from about 45,000 feet into the atmosphere around the storm. And what it does, it sends information to the forecasters um, with, with temperature and dew point, also wind direction, wind speed, altitude, pressure. And uh, they'll take this information and ingest it into the models, which will help the models better forecast or better agree on where the storm might go in order to help give warnings and watches out to the public and to the emergency managers who need them. For nine hours, the G4 crew continued to gather data around rapidly intensifying Katrina. At the end of the day, we were treated to a beautiful skyline as we approached Tampa. We landed around 9 p.m. and the plane was parked back in the hangar. It is interesting to note that at 11 p.m. the National Hurricane Center nailed the forecast track of Katrina two and a half days before actual landfall. My hat's off to them. On Saturday, August 27th, Katrina reached Category 3 status with winds of 115 miles per hour and a central pressure of 945 millibars. The eye was clearly visible on satellite and the Hurricane Center noted that Katrina is located within an atmospheric environment that seemingly cannot get much more conducive for strengthening. I stayed with fellow storm chasers Jeff Gammons and Chris Kalura in Okeechobee on Saturday before making the push up the coast. I needed the rest and I knew traffic would be a problem up there anyway. On Sunday I headed to Pensacola to visit my folks and then for my target area, Gulfport. The drive to Gulfport was smooth sailing, that is if you weren't going east. I saw a hundred mile line of bumper to bumper evacuation traffic. The traffic went on and on. At 11 a.m., the Hurricane Center advised that Katrina was now a Category 5 with a central pressure of 907 millibars, as strong as Camille, but much larger.
A NOAA P-3 Hurricane Hunter plane flew into Katrina and measured 902 millibars, the fourth lowest record for the Atlantic Basin. Unlike the G-4 jet, the P-3 flies right into the eye of the storm. This is our main data station and basically all the sensors and instruments from the, the whole aircraft are fed into one of these two racks. Uh, the radar data comes into this, this computer and these control boxes here. The uh, flight level data is over here to my right. That all comes into here. We've got uh, 250 something odd parameters that we measure up to 80 times a second. So we're collecting vast amounts of data, just constantly sampling uh, flight level parameters. We're extrapolating our flight level parameters down to the surface. And we actually have some sensors that are remotely sensing from our flight level down to the surface. So for instance, a new, uh, new technology we have is the Step Frequency Microwave Radiometer, or, or SFMR. It can uh, actually measure from flight level, it can measure the winds at the surface. And that's critical information for the hurricane center, the forecasters. We send that data off to the Hurricane Center via one of our SATCOM links and uh, within minutes of collecting the data, the forecasters down at the Hurricane Center are looking at the data so they can see what the surface winds are doing and uh, that information is vital to them to make their forecast for accurate intensity forecasting and for track forecasting as well. As I continued toward Gulfport, the eastbound traffic was still deadlocked. We have to figure out a better way to do this, I thought. One of the few vehicles I did see heading west was the Ever Faithful Red Cross. Fellow storm chasers Scott McPartland and Dave Lewison from New York were also driving down to catch Katrina. There I am, tornado. Look at what we have, we got 15 gallons. We're, we're a driving bomb right now. <laughs> and this car gets about 30 miles a gallon, so that's, that's our ticket out of here, 450 miles. And we're just about to cross the Mississippi state line, here comes the Mississippi side. Ooh, very good, I get that too. Yeah, see it coming up here? about the so be in Mississippi in about 10 seconds. We are coming into Gulfport. We're about one mile from Highway 90, which runs along the, the ocean here. This is where the storm surge is going to be massive. And a lot of what we see here will not be here in a couple of days.
Would you take Hancock Bank and a Cat 5? Hmm. Maybe. It's a ghost town here, and this is 24 hours, well, less than 24 hours before the hurricane is supposed to hit. No traffic. Uh, a few cars on the road, but this is really nice. Now I need to find out where the heck I am. Okay, we're gonna go to the right. Long Beach. Let's look for a place to hide. Parking garage! <laughs> Bingo! Parking garage in Gulfport, Mississippi on the water. Now, I don't know if that's very safe, but we will check it out. I filmed a few spots to get a before and after comparison of the damage. I drove over to past Christian and didn't find anything safe for me to hide in, so I came back over to Gulfport. It was getting dark and I still didn't have a secure place to shoot from and I started to get a little worried. Even Gulfport, my first choice, just wasn't safe enough for me. My instincts were telling me Gulfport was just too dangerous, so I went to Biloxi and found a great spot at the Coliseum. I called fellow storm chasers Jeff Gammons and Chris Kalur who were in the area and told them about the Coliseum. They decided to join me around midnight to check out the spot. We are at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum in Biloxi, Mississippi, or just, just west of Biloxi, actually. We're actually between Gulf Shores, or is it Gulfport? Uh, Gulfport. Yeah, it's Gulfport in Biloxi, Mississippi. We're kind of snug between the two. We're at the Coliseum. This area is going to flood with about 20 feet of storm surge. Uh, we're going to have to put the cars up on some of the ramps here get them elevated a little higher so they survive the storm surge. We don't know if they're going to survive the wind, uh, but we're hoping that the, the, the buildings here in the back will help buffet the, uh, the cars a little. Um, there's about 50 people here in the Coliseum. 
that are uh, some women and children and locals. And they are taking shelter right now in the locker room. We've already scouted all of the premises. Um, we have some of our safe zone. We have some bunkers that are completely reinforced concrete steel bunkers, no windows. And we'll be setting our stuff up in there and freely walking around and shooting uh, different sides of the building during different sides of the storm. Um, we might be stuck here a while because the surge is going to come in and it's going to come in pretty deep. And hopefully the backside of the eye will actually force the water back offshore and help get the water out of here so we don't have to sit here too long. Scott and Dave decided to ride out Katrina in a parking garage next to the Hancock Bank in Gulfport. Everybody was pumped up and no one slept that night. Scott was rolling tape just before daybreak on August 29th. As soon as there was enough shooting light, I zoomed in on the surge coming over Highway 90. The wind was howling and I wanted to get down there to film as soon as possible before it got too dangerous. Chris Kalura and I left the safety of the Coliseum and headed down to the water, dodging swaying poles on the way.
Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a piece of plywood land nearby, and then something else in the distance tear apart. It was time to go, and I yelled at Chris to let's get out of here. So we ran back to the safety of the Coliseum. Over in Gulfport, Scott was realizing that the parking garage was more like a shooting gallery with flying metal debris coming in on them. Before the surge came up, I decided to have a little fun in the wind. I had to be careful on the grass because there was an aluminum power pole just to the right of the frame. And I didn't want to end up like a bug on a windshield. As the wind shifted more southerly, it really started pushing the water up towards the Colosseum.
carriage coming up to the Coliseum. A piece of debris comes in close to Scott, sending them running for cover.
Here comes the water in the Mississippi Gulf Coast Coliseum. It's coming in. There it is. Surge is coming in. People are having to, having to go from the first floor to the second floor. Everybody's moving their stuff. Water is backed up about a foot outside the door and it will slowly come in here too. It's, it's, uh, it's just getting started. That is water coming in, Mississippi Gulf Coast Coliseum. I just moved my car, it was out there. Now it would be in about two feet of water. That's the water outside the Coliseum. You can see it coming in. It's coming in the door right here. Let me show you. Right there. It's coming in. It's coming in big. I gotta move that car. I, gotta, I was pissed off. Go, go find him. As Katrina moved inland, the wind shifted more out of the west and the water receded. This brand new car was smashed against the steel window frames by the surge.
After the hurricane passed, the coastline was devastated. Scott and Dave took a few last shots of the aftermath before carefully navigating their way around all the debris and heading back to I-10. In Biloxi, the storm surge moved the President Casino Barge from the Gulf across US-90, crushing a Holiday Inn. This looter passed on all the quarters and was going for the tokens. I stayed for another few hours to film the aftermath, then with the help of some locals, found a route back to the interstate. The next day, a convoy of state law enforcement vehicles and boats commandeered the Mississippi Coast Coliseum to use as headquarters. A few people I talked to after the storm told me this was worse than Camille. I really didn't know how bad it was until I got back home and watched the news the next morning. <laughs> 